Building community resilience and adaptive capacity require an informed, engaged, and prepared public. The Clio Institute is exclusively dedicated to climate education, advocacy, and engagement. Joining us in studio is our trusted climate change advisor, and speaking on their behalf is climate educator Ian Corton. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's start with what is your role within the Clio Institute? So one of the things that I do with the Clio Institute is I go into the classroom and I talk with students of all different age levels, um, high school, middle school. Uh, the Clio Institute also connects with college students. And I go in and I talk to them about what climate change is, what the impacts are, how it's affecting us, and what we can do about it. I try and focus a lot on solutions so that they know in the future what we can be working towards. That's excellent. So now that leads me to my next question. What is climate change? So climate change is happening, first of all, because of a lot of the industrial activities that humans have been doing, mostly burning fossil fuels and by doing a lot of deforestation as well. So that's a one-two punch that's causing the earth to warm. And what we can think of is kind of like how the earth is a certain temperature normally, but adding these greenhouse gases to the atmosphere is kind of like adding extra jackets. When I talk to students, I explain it to them if there's a cold snap outside and it's like 50 degrees, which is great in Miami, uh, would you wear a jacket? And a lot of them raise their hand. And I say, would you wear two layers? I would wear a sweater and a jacket because I get cold easily. Only a couple of them raise their hand. Okay, would you wear five jackets? Would you wear 10 jackets? And none of them raise their hands because that's, <laughs> that's too many jackets. So the Earth's temperature is going up, not because of like us getting closer to the sun or any volcanic activity, we've added extra greenhouse gases to the atmosphere. And as a result, it's like adding extra jackets. It's making the earth warmer because it's trapping more of the same heat. Ian, thank you. So you mentioned that the heat is trapped. So what exactly causes climate change? Can you educate us? Yeah, so light's coming in from the sun from outer space and some of it would be reflected back out into space. Some of it, however, gets trapped by gases in the atmosphere and it gets re-radiated as heat. Um, there's a bit of complex chemistry that goes on with that, but some materials will have a, more of an impact on warming than other materials. And the carbon dioxide that we've been putting out, the methane gas that uh, has been put in the atmosphere as well, a lot of these that come from industrial processes, they're really, really good at trapping heat. They don't all trap heat the same way, but they're really effective at doing that. And so even adding a small amount of those gases to our atmosphere has a big impact on our planet. So now that we understand what climate change is and what causes climate change, can you explain to us what impacts it has? Oh, there's a lot of impacts. A lot of people, they hear the term global warming and they think, oh, well, the temperature's just gonna keep going up. And it's more of a case of a lot of the weather that we see getting unstable, getting weird. We see things, of course, like extreme heat. We see on occasion things like blizzards or tornadoes in places where they hadn't been before mm. because our climate and as an extension, our weather is getting unstable. We recently had the rain bomb event that happened. I was at a conference, in fact, and had to go through flooded streets. It was a very scary situation. It was something that I'm not used to because you know, years and years ago, the areas in town, they wouldn't necessarily flood. And we've been getting sudden downpours that have been causing extreme flooding not just you know, here in Miami, but all over the place. Um, one of the effects that we know is gonna happen, speaking of water, is sea level rise. We're already starting to see the ocean levels rise, and I've actually got some props here to Show sort us. of demonstrate that. So one of the things that we bring into the classroom, we have this picture here where our experts have determined this is the coastline of what Florida looks like today, South Florida particularly, and I can find where uh, my home is on this map by looking at the coast. <laughs> And if it's business as usual, if we don't change our ways, if we don't switch to renewables, we you know, don't stop putting these greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, the sea level rise is gonna keep getting worse. Um, we can't necessarily rule out perhaps eight to 10 feet of sea level rise uh, by 2100. Ian, you have a perfect visual for us here. Explain to us what this is. So this is a sea level rise board. Um, I'm about six feet tall. So when we look at eight feet of sea level rise, that gives us a visual for us to know, okay, this is actually what we're talking about, rather than just looking at a number going, okay, eight or 10 feet. What? You can see how much water that that is from sea level rise. Thank you so much for sharing that visual with us. Now, what can we do about climate change? Yeah, and that's really important because a lot of Miami is at about six feet of uh, sea level. So you can go to cleoinstitute.org slash get involved to learn more information. Ian, thank you so much for joining us on Inside South Florida and sharing all this important information on climate change. Thank you for having me.